What's going on y'all? This is Czar. So a lot of y'all have emailed me and wanted me to do a video on mastering. Um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube uh, for mastering in Studio One. So to make mine unique, I'm doing it a mastering your own mixes in Studio One. Uh, so this is coming from the perspective that you mixed the song and now you're going to master the song. Um, I think a lot of mix engineers now master what they mix, uh, which has changed a lot from the past because in the past and still now um, you get the mix engineer to do the mix and then the mastering engineer to do the master. Uh, nowadays a lot of mix engineers are mastering uh, what they mix uh, because uh, really a lot of that's what a lot of the clients expect now. Um, now I'm gonna give you three tips uh, to mastering your own mixes and then I'll show you how I approach uh, mastering your own mix. So I guess first let's talk about what is a master. So mastering a song, uh, in my opinion, is preparing a song or a collection of songs uh, for commercial release. So when you're ready to release your song to the public, uh, that is the final step of the song, the mastering. So the first tip is to don't try to fix anything in the master. Uh, just like you hear people say, don't fix it in the mix, or let's take it back to the recording stage. When you're recording, you shouldn't record and say, oh, we'll fix that in the mix. Go ahead and get it right in recording. And then the same way when you're mixing. Uh, when you're mixing, you don't want to mix something and say, oh, we'll fix that in the master. So if you're mixing the song, you should be 100% um, happy with your mix before you take it to mastering. Um, and if the song is not ready to be mastered, until you are satisfied with the mix. So don't try to fix anything in the master because it's a, a lot harder to try to fix something in the master than just going back to the mix and correcting the problem there. Uh, the second tip is not to overdo it. So I, I struggled with mastering my own mixes for a long time and um, it was, really became stressful because I was approaching it as I'm spending eight to 10 hours mixing this song, getting it to sound the best that I possibly can. And now I've got to master it and make it sound even better. You know, how do you do that? Uh, so I struggled with that for a long time. And I was uh, talking to one of my engineer friends who's uh, won a couple Grammys. And I was talking to him about it. And he looked at me with a straight face and said, uh, who says mastering is making it sound any better? And that's been some of the greatest advice I've ever gotten because it completely changed the way I approached mastering so now when I master I'm not looking to take my master and make it sound another hundred percent better than my mix uh, I'm I'm mastering to make subtle changes to enhance the song uh, not trying to take uh, the song to a whole nother level uh, so that really helped me so when I say don't overdo it um, a lot of times you'll mix and then because you want the master to sound so much better, you'll end up overdoing things. And too much of anything in mastering is not a good thing, in my opinion, uh, meaning too much EQ, uh, too much compression. Uh, I feel like everything in mastering should be subtle enhancements. Uh, so that is uh, the second tip. The third tip is to get another set of ears on the project. So one of the perks of taking your song to a mastering engineer is you're getting another set of ears on it, you're getting another opinion on it, um, giving someone else on the outside a look in on the song. When you work on a mix for so long, especially if it's your song, uh, you become emotionally attached to it. Um, getting someone else, and maybe uh, you know another engineer friend that you have, or someone else that does music, just getting their opinion, letting them hear it, because they may hear things that that you don't hear. Now, you know, I'm not saying every mix and master you do, you should let someone else hear it. But, you know, every now and then, um, you know, pass a song off and, and get some feedback and uh, let someone else hear it. So, you know, there's the, those are the, the three tips that I have on mastering your own mixes. Uh, don't try to fix anything in mastering. Uh, don't overdo it because, uh, like I said, you don't want your master to sound completely different from the mix. Uh, you hear a lot of mix engineers say that the mastering engineer ruined my mix and it's because they made it sound completely different. Um, and the third one, which is, you know, get another set of ears on the project. Uh, so now let's uh, take a look at how I approach mastering. So I've got the project page open and I've got a song here that I mixed uh, for Jashayla um, that I also also mastered. Uh, before we get into that, let's just go over some quick 
overview of the um, of the project page. So you know, down here in the middle, we have the level meter. I'm going to um, play a little bit of the song uh, so we can get the get the level moving here. And um, also, let's make sure I have set. Okay, peak RMS, uh, VU hold. So just quickly explain that the peak RMS. When you see the levels moving, um, it's going to show the peak, which is is loud, the loudest. Uh, that the song gets and the RMS is the average level of the song and the VU hold is it's holding my peak uh, so I can see where on the meter it's peaking at so let's play a little bit of the song and uh, take a look at that my man Zar make tracks like this So you can see the red is the peak and where the white was moving, that was uh, the RMS. Now, you can um, I always have a reference track for, for the song that I'm mastering. And for this, my reference track was Monica, Every Time the Beat Drops. And your reference track should be a track that sounds similar to the one that you're mastering. Just you can put it up against that, listen to it, and uh, see if you're about at the same level. Um, it won't play the Monica song for copyright reasons, um, but it is peaking uh, right at right at zero, which is where a lot of people master. Um, I think I read on the internet, which you know, of course makes it right, um, that when you master for uh, MP3, is that it's best to make your output, uh, I think it's like negative one to negative 1.2 dB. Um, so I, have, I haven't done a comparison um, with that, doing an MP3 at, at negative one dB and doing one at almost zero. Uh, but just throwing it out there, that's, that's something I read. Um, so I'll quickly look at my, my chain. Oh, I'll also show you the, the phase meter, which is here on the right of the level meter. And to take a closer look at the phase meter, I've got one open in the signal chain. So I'm going to play it again and just look at the phase. The phase, as long as this is moving to the right, you're in phase. And if you're going to the left, you're out of phase. Uh, when you listen to something out of phase, uh, it will sound a little weird. And I'll play this out of phase in just a second. But watch how the phase meter goes to the right uh, to show that the song is in phase. Okay, now let's uh, open up the mix tool and I'm going to invert one side and play it out of phase now. So, you know, whenever you're mastering, you make sure, and mixing as well, you know, make sure that your song is in phase because uh, it's very important. Uh, now, just looking at the signal chain. So I'm just going to take off the phase meter uh, and remove the mix tool. So if you take a look at my mix, let's look at where we're peaking at. This is just the mix. I haven't done anything as far as mastering yet. You see my mix is uh, peaking at uh, around negative 2 dB. So, of course, in mastering, we want to bump that level up so it's closer to zero. So the first thing I do in mastering is um, EQ. Now, remember, I, don't, I just want to make subtle changes here. And so when I do subtle change, I listen to the song, and I say, what would I want to subtly enhance in this? This is a, a dance uh, club banger song, so I want to bring out the low end a little bit more. So what I've done in the EQ is I've added a low end bump and I've rolled it off at, at 20 hertz uh, to save as you know as much headroom as I can. So I got about a 2 dB bump around 60 hertz and the reason I know that's at 60 hertz if I look at my uh, FFT, the spectrum analyzer here, uh, when I hit play, you can see where my low end is focused at. you can see right around here is where that low end is peaking at. So that's where I'd, 
applied a slight boost. Could actually probably use a cue to tighten it up a little bit, but um, I like that for what I did. So let's take that in and out and hear what it does to the song. So it just it just makes that uh, that 808 there pop just a little bit more. Now sometimes I try to subtly enhance uh, the high end, uh, but with this song I'm happy with where the high end is. Now, if you add too much high end, you're going to add sibilance uh, to the vocals, and as well as you risk uh, the hi hats really poking out. Um, in this track, when I added high end to it, just to see what it would sound like, um, the hi hats really poked out. So that's why I didn't go with any EQing of the high end, uh, but just to show you. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I've got a high shelf here that I added a couple dB to. Uh, I'm going to play it with it out and I'm going to play it with it um, in. Now just so you can hear uh, the difference of what, what it's doing to the hi-hats. You can hear a huge difference there uh, with the hi-hats uh, coming in and out with that high end added. Uh, so that is why uh, for this song, um, I did not add any high end to it. Uh, the next thing I have in the chain is the binaural pan. So what I've done with this is I've used this to make the mix a little wider. Um, I normally between 125, 150, maybe 165 percent, somewhere in there, I think is a good uh, width to have. Um, you know, again, this is all subjective, so you can go all the way to the 200% that this uh, plugin will let you do. Um, but that's where I normally use it at. So I'm going to leave the EQ in. We're going to bring in the binaural pan and uh, show you how I widened it uh, with the binaural pan. <laughs> So the main thing that that's uh, doing is um, you can hear the the pizzicato uh, that I've got panning from left to right in the mix. Take a listen to that again. And with the binaural pan and widening it, that part is really being widened because that's what I have bouncing from the extreme left uh, to the extreme right. Now take a listen to the, just the, uh, just focus on the pizzicato uh, panning from the left and right. System, we upgrade into the box, we So if you're listening to this in stereo in, in front of monitors, uh, with that widening, you can really hear that bouncing from uh, left to right there. Uh, next up is the saturation knob. So if you have uh, Studio One Pro, uh, which you, know, you should have if you've got this project page open, um, you know it came with um, the saturation. Uh, I think it's 2.0. Came with the um, maybe it's 2.5. Uh, one of them, you know, they came with the saturation knob from Soft2, which I really love. Um, I showed it off in another video with the um, thickening vocals. Um, this plugin really uh, brings out the mid range to me and it makes the vocals pop more. Uh, so I'm going to play that. And I've got it set to keep low, uh, which keep low means keep the lows untouched. So I don't want to saturate the lows uh, because. I feel like if I do, that low end is going to start to distort some. Because if you push this plug in too far, it will distort very easily. Uh, so let's bring this in and pay attention to how the vocals pop out more. Let's play a different part of the song. Do you? 
So I really like what the saturation um, does to the mid range, which is where the vocals uh, live. Uh, you can see I'm starting to clip here now, which brings me to the next plugin in the chain, which is the limiter. Uh, I absolutely love the limiter in Studio One because it has a input where I can push gain into the limiter, uh, which is what I want to do here because I'm uh, I was before the saturation not uh, peaking at around negative two dB. I want to get this more closer to zero, uh, so I pushed uh, two dB input into the limiter. Now uh, the ceiling I've got it negative uh, point one and the threshold is negative 0.12. So when it does try to go over negative 0.1, uh, the limiter is gonna bring it back down. So you don't want too much uh, limiting on here. I usually stay within a couple dB, as you see here, uh, my max gain reduction is a uh, negative three dB. Uh, one of the coolest features on uh, the Studio One limiter is that it has uh, true peak limiting, which uh, protects against protects against intra sample uh, clipping. Uh, what that is, is peaks that happen so fast that the limiter doesn't catch them can still cause uh, can still cause it to clip. You won't be able to see it with the limiter, but what you can see it with is the level meter. So if you take the level meter and you set it to a true peak here, uh, I'm going to pin the limiter here and let's get the level meter back up. Now, with the true peak off, uh, you would think that here with my ceiling at 0.1, the sound cannot go above 0.1. That's my output ceiling. With the intra sample clipping, it can, and I'll show you here. Okay, how about we turn on the level meter? So if you see here, my level meter is telling me I'm clipping, but look at the output of the project page on Studio One. It's not telling me that I'm clipping here. So that's the intra sample clipping uh, happening. So to prevent that, I'm gonna turn on the true peak uh, limiting here. Let's clear these and now. You can see I'm no longer uh, clipping. Uh, so that's a great feature to have, and that's why I use the Studio One limiter uh, pretty much every time I master a song. Uh, so now, I'm just gonna take take the mix tool out and the phase meter out. Uh, now I'm gonna play the song, and um, it's gonna bypass my whole mastering chain. And um, let's see what we sound like here. And now I'm going to bring it in. And then on this pass, I'm just going to bring it in uh, back and forth and just toggle it uh, so you can hear it go from mastered uh, to just the mix. With the booming system, we upgrade into the box suites now. Oh, yeah. He ain't cocky as mom, my name done rocky. Now I'm looking better, trying to change the weather. Hey, hey, hey. So right up, change the game. Let's all day, make it rain. Watch my crown, what's my name? What, what, what's my name? Yeah, you know what's the thing, cause we say that. Okay, so... As you see, my mastering is, of course, it is louder because I push the gain, uh, but it's, like I said, uh, subtle enhancements to the song. Uh, one thing I want to point out that you'll notice that I have uh, WAV files here um, on the left. And when you bring in um, your song to master, you always want to bring in a WAV file. You don't want to master an MP3. You want to master 
uh, the WAV file and export that uh, to an MP3. Uh, just a, a quick note there. Um, and just to explain uh, the inserts here and uh, the master at the bottom here. So uh, the insert is I'm applying plugins to just this track, just this song. Uh, if I did uh, anything on the inserts uh, here in this section, it's going to apply it to all three of these tracks um, at the same time. Uh, so there you go. That's my approach uh, to mastering your own mixes. If you got any questions, you know, of course, email me. Um, and if you want to hear the final uh, master, the full version of this song, it is on my website at uh, www.audiozar.net. Uh, and it's also it's on my SoundCloud uh, page as well. All right, I'll catch y'all next time.